Okay, class. Focus. Cosby. So we have learned a lot about differentiation and integration. We have learned all the technicalities of it all already. We even learned how to apply differentiation, connected rates of change, to real life uh, application. For example, you want to design a, a can that with some specifications. Maybe the specifications is that it must contain, it must have a capacity of 300 ml. Then I want to keep the cost as low as possible based on the materials. What should the dimensions be? Things like that. Okay, we have done these applications, but there is something which is um, where, where differentiation and integration is very applicable to our secondary school studies. And that is during in the studies of kinematics. Okay, so um, recap, dy over dx tells us the rate of change of y with respect to x. Okay, so this is actually our gradient function. Once you have dy dx, you are able to tell I can find gradient of y given any value of x. That's what it means, isn't it? Our dy dx. Today we are going to change dy dx to something else. Instead of dy dx, let's have ds over dt. Now this s over here refers to displacement. I, I know you think that s should be for speed, but the convention is that we use s for displacement. Okay? S for displacement. So ds dt, it tells us the rate of change of what? Displacement, yes. T L A C E M E N T with respect to time. Time T. Okay, so everything else is the same. So this is actually the gradient function. This also means that I can find the gradient of our st graph given any t given any time at any point in time i am able to find the gradient of what of the displacement time graph now based on this definition what does this sound like to you velocity. yeah this is this is velocity this is the same as velocity. Uh, velocity. This is the same as velocity. Huh? In other words, when I have a displacement time graph like this, S for displacement, and this is my time, T, whatever it looks like, maybe it looks like this. This means that when time equals to zero, it has a certain displacement already. It did not start from the origin. It started from maybe one. Then the displacement starts to increase. It went further and further away. And at any point in time over here, if I find the gradient, I can find the speed. Oh, sorry, I can find the velocity. What happens at this point over here? At this point, it is a turning point, right? Turning point. What is actually turning? The, the object is turning. The displacement is now changing direction. From an increase, meaning I'm walking further and further away. Hey, at this point, after this point, I'm coming closer and closer. There is a turn over there. Gradient equals to zero. Gradient equals zero. Uh, recap again. What does gradient represent? What is gradient represented by in this graph? Velocity. Velocity. Gradient equals zero means. Velocity equals zero. When is velocity equals zero? When you stop moving or when you're turning. Right? When you throw something up in the air, at the highest point in time, what happened to it? It was instantaneously at rest. Okay, it was instantaneously at rest over there. So the velocity was zero. It changed direction. It was going up, then it started to come down. 
Okay? So that's our physics application for it. So after that, we can have another turning point over here, then it went up again, and so on and so forth. Okay so far? Any questions? No, huh? Okay, next. Next thing. From here, I can actually plot every single gradient over here. And I can translate it. Okay, let, let's choose an easier graph. Huh? Let's say we have a graph that looks like, like this. Okay? So maybe this is the equation of. Okay, never mind. Okay, so now our first graph is our displacement time graph. The second graph is our velocity time graph. Okay, based on this graph, all the gradient. I'm going to transfer it down over here. Now, when time goes to zero, what is the gradient? What's the gradient over here? Is it zero? No. What can you tell from this? You only can tell it's positive, right? Let's, let's generally give it a positive value. Okay? Is it steep over here? When time goes to zero? Yeah, it's steep, right? What happens when time increases? Is it still positive? But is it uh, less steep? That means the gradient value gets smaller, right? So we expect when time increases, the value will start to drop. Am I right? So the gradient keeps on decreasing until this very special point over here. What happens at this timing? When this time over here, the gradient is zero. So I have one point over here. Make sense so far? So beyond this turning point, the gradient becomes negative. Okay, so it starts to become a negative gradient over here. It is a very gentle negative gradient. So as I continue to move to the right, the gradient becomes more and more negative. So I get a graph looking like this. Does this look like a straight line? Yes. What does that imply about this curve over here? If this is a straight line, what kind of graph is this? Parabola. Right? Do you know why is it a parabola? Do you know why is it a parabola if this is a straight line? No? You integrate a straight line, you get a parabola. Is that what you're saying? Yes, correct. You integrate a, you integrate a straight line, you will get a parabola. So the only way for you to get a straight line over here by differentiating it is if this is a parabola to begin with. Okay? So let's see what is exactly the scenario over here. My displacement is increasing. That means I'm going further and further away from the origin. Let's say this is the origin. Okay, according to the first graph, huh? I'm going further and further away. But the rate of movement is slowing down. Can you see? In the first maybe one second, I covered this amount of distance. In the next one second, I covered a shorter amount of distance. So I'm moving, but I'm actually slowing down. And this is translated for our velocity time graph. You see that the velocity is actually dropping while remaining positive. That is, the velocity is dropping while remaining positive. It is on a positive um, velocity axis. But it is slowing down. It is slowing down until I come to the turning point. I stop at the turning point. It is a maximum displacement already. See the maximum displacement over there? That corresponds to velocity equals zero. That's because I'm not turning. And then I'm speeding up again. Speeding up to reach this point. Okay? Yeah, it is like a shutter run. During this expert, during this demonstration, which direction is positive? Is it there or here? That side is positive. Okay? So when I whenever I travel in that direction, my displacement is positive. My velocity is also positive. When I reach my turning point and I head in this direction, I'm going to this direction right now, but if my displacement is still positive, negative. 
falls under the horizontal axis. Okay, so far? Tomorrow, we will continue with another aspect. What is that? What's the next aspect? Acceleration. Acceleration. Then, after this subtopic, we will talk about area under the graph, which involves integration. integration. Then we're done. Yes? What is the rate of change of acceleration? 